question nerds here. We end the first question is from the easy category. How do you pronounce Linux? <laughs> well, I pronounce Linux as Linux. <laughs> If you are Linux Torvalds, you probably pronounce it as Linux. Well, on the other hand, if you come from the West Coast of the United States, you pronounce it as Linux. And as he said, he doesn't care how you pronounce it as long as you just use it. <laughs> it was in July of 1991, uh, which was shortly after Linus had released the 0 0.09 version of the kernel. Uh, that I started playing with Linux. Heard about it on, I think, Usenet, downloaded it from Finland, started playing with it, thought it was really neat. Um, and at that point, there was very limited transatlantic internet bandwidth. Uh, so it was very painful to download all these packages from Finland. Uh, and so I decided, well, we need to do something about this. And I used my personal workstation that was on my desk, which was TSX11. Uh, .mit.edu, and I set up a mirror archive of all the kernel sources on my private workstation. And that was the first um, US Linux FTP site that came into existence. The first time I got Linux was I downloaded the floppy images for Linux. Uh, and in the Penn State University computer lab, I installed it on one of their machines, and uh, they, they subsequently kicked me out of the computer lab that day. But that was my first experience with Linux. Fairly early in 92, suddenly I didn't know everybody anymore. That it was no longer uh, me and a couple of friends. It was me and a couple of hundred people who I had no idea where they, where they were, what they did with the system, and, and who they are. And that was, that was a big step. The 1.0 release in 94 was certainly important, and it meant a lot to me just because there was a lot of work behind it. It was certainly a landmark to commercial use of Linux. It was really hard to use Linux commercially before um, 1.0. <laughs> Kun esimerkiksi Dossi nostaa kotikoneeseen parilla sadalla markalla, niin tuommoinen Unix kotikoneeseen maksaa helposti parikymmentä tuhatta markkaa, mikä on opiskelijalle hiukan liian paljon. Menkää vaikka jonnekin tietokoneen kauppaan, niin kysykää, että onko teillä SCU Unix, niin ne katsoo teitä kysyä ja sanoo, että ei, en mennessä. Itse asiassa paljon helpompi kirjoittaa se itse. <laughs> the development process of Linux is odd. It is not a hierarchy. Everyone is free to suggest and send changes to the code. There is one person who leads, makes the big decisions, and chooses the best ideas. Linux, the benevolent dictator. Everyone knew that someone had to be the head of this work group, and Linus was the natural head given that he did the original core Linux uh, kernel, and Linus was someone who was a very, very good leader. He's someone who's actually quite humble. You know, he doesn't try to take credit for stuff that he doesn't do. You want to have hundreds, thousands of people working on, on the kernel at the same time. But you don't want to have all these people stepping on each other's toes all the time, because that way you will just get, most of the time will be spent on just resolving conflicts between people. And you just have flame wars all, all the time. I used to think that it was this hierarchy where 
I was at the top and they were my lieutenants and and uh, I don't think it's that way anymore. It's more like uh, uh, a web of trust where I have people I trust and they have people they trust. Well, there are lots of things that motivate developers. There's um, artistic pride, uh, the, the satisfaction that you get from doing good craftsmanlike work. There's the idealist feeling of being something larger and uh, more part of something larger and more important than you are. Uh, there's a desire to help the world and see good solutions happen. In the absence of monetary rewards, most people most of the time are playing for a kind of reputation reward among their peers. One strength of the Linux development world is that practically every software author can be contacted directly by email. Ted Tso was crucial in the spread of Linux in the United States. To be fair, it's very easy to say, if we were in charge, we wouldn't do these things. But then again, we're not getting all these email messages saying, please, let me add this new feature. Um, and so I don't know what I would actually do if I were really in charge. Dave Miller is a maintainer who reviews changes that developers want to make in the kernel. He is like a funnel between the contributors and the King Linus. The way that we work is you can talk all day about a great idea or a solution to a problem or something that, that you think is an interesting feature for Linux to have. But you've got to show us, show me something concrete. Show me a piece of code that does that. So, so something that's tangible that I can test myself so that I can try it out and I can think about what it is instead of just talking abstractly about a topic all day. Alan Cox, a Renaissance hacker, is the closest collaborator to Linus, his right-hand man. For me, code has more in common with, for example, poetry or some kinds of writing. And the beauty of it is in structure, in putting ideas across one at a time in a clear way. So a good piece of code you can read without comments and it's immediately obvious why it's been written, how it's elegant. And so you're looking for code which is both clean and elegant, but also doesn't rely on sort of clever programming tricks, doesn't make assumptions which may not be true in the future because the last thing we want to do is to have much code in the Linux kernel, which requires large amounts of effort to keep it working. We want code which will just continue to work and work forever. Having led the Linux project for five years in Helsinki, Linus was recruited to Silicon Valley, California. He wanted to see the other side of the world, the world of commerce, not just the academic side. You're, you're quite an unorthodox figure in the Silicon Valley world. What do they make of you there? You've not taken the, the, the crazy commercial part, if you like. Silicon Valley is an American. South Latin America, the top way. The world is quite like the Antarctica. You're never alone in Silicon Valley, you will say. Seems I was the chosen prodigy Riding for the summers by Shakespeare Some sort of balcony But you didn't hear me get near The main clear meaning Harry the Earth The peace, we found the breath We probably sell the shares As soon as you can 